So this is going to be a massive running shoe review of several different shoes I've run in during the last couple of years probably. My idea of an ideal running shoe is something that's very, very soft and cushioned. Something with a really wide toe box, no heel lift, a deep lugged sole with soft, grippy rubber for a really good traction in mud and snow. Something that's very soft and flexible. And finally, something that's lightweight. This is the Skechers Go Run Ride 3. The cushioning is, is quite good. I think you can see this. When I bend that up, really soft shoe. A little bit firmer in the middle, it seems. And then soft again at the end. And they have this mid-foot strike thing which in the Skechers Go Run Ride 2 was too much. And I actually took them and, and modified them, and I'll show you that in a minute. But this shoe has great cushioning, has a wide toe box. I actually went down to size 10 in these. I believe most, I've been wearing size 10 and a half in almost every shoe I get. And most of the Skechers that I have seem a little bit too big. And I finally decided to take the plunge and go down to a size 10, and I'm very happy with it. So I have a feeling I've been sizing up to 10 and a half to get a little bit of extra width in shoes that weren't so wide, when I didn't really need that long a shoe. These have very little heel lift. I am not using the insole, which in this case is pretty nice because they, they have put a, a sort of an insole in here, even though I'm not using the one that came with the shoe and that reduces the heel lift a little bit fairly flat good cushioned wide toe box i have not run in the woods in these yet but i have a feeling this will be okay probably not as good as the sketchers go run ride and i'm talking okay in mud and on slippery routes we don't have terribly rocky trails they tend to be muddy and rooty and these are also quite light these are a big improvement over the Skechers Go Run 2 as far as the lump in the middle. I'm so glad they don't have that. My second favorite shoe, and it might even be my favorite shoe with the modification I've made, is the Skechers Go Run Ride 2. I think this is every bit as cushioned, if not more maybe. I had to remove the lump in the middle, and the way I did that was this was completely covered in black, and black, this black stuff, and I, I shaved it down with a knife. And that has reduced the amount of lump that this has. The cushioning in these shoes is outstanding, absolutely outstanding. It has this Resolite material here that is super soft, seems to be wearing okay, surprisingly, for as soft as it is. They have a wide toe box. They have, I guess, four millimeters of heel lift, although they aren't bad. There are shoes I have with four millimeters of heel lift that really feel like they have more than that. The sole has good traction. The, the things are, these are deeper lugged than the Go Run Ride 3, and I've been very happy with these in the woods. The flexibility is outstanding. Did I show you the flexibility of the Go Run Ride 2? It's absolutely outstanding. Even in the back, maybe not as good. Yeah, definitely not as good as the Go Run Ride 2. It is more flexible all around. I think by, by closing up a lot of this stuff, it, it's made this a little bit less flexible, but it's still totally acceptable. This is very light the, with the big lump removed. These are great for running in the woods or on the roads. The next shoe was the Skechers Go Bionic Trail. And this, I believe, has zero drop without the insole. It had an okay amount of traction. These lugs are smaller than I wanted, and they wore down fairly quickly. Now it's not so great in the slippery mud, which obviously I think you can tell by the look of this shoe. I run in a lot of mud. So very flexible. Uh, maybe not even... I think the... Uh, the Go Run shoes are more flexible, actually. I ran on um, a dirt road that had just been graded, and it was killing me because the sharp, pointy rocks were stabbing my foot. It was very difficult to run on them. So they, they give me enough protection 
from the roots and rocks and the woods, which our rocks are more rounded than pointy, but the rocks on a dirt road that has just been graded tend to be quite pointy and were, were rather tough to take. The cushioning is not anywhere near like the Go Run ride shoes has much firmer but okay for the woods has a nice wide toe box no heel lift without the insole the sole is kind of average for traction flexibility is okay not outstanding and they're fairly light this shoe is the Skechers Go Bionic and I ran some in the woods in these and I liked them quite a bit I thought they were okay except for I tended to get small rocks and sticks, little tiny pieces of stick. See, and there's a rock right in here. I don't think I'll be able to get at it, but there is a rock up in there. Or is it a stick? It might be a stick. It's a little piece of stick. I don't know if you can see that, but that is the issue. I would get sticks in here that would kill you because there's no nothing between here except for a small piece of material between the bottom of the shoe and your foot there's nothing to protect you so if things get stuck in here they tend to jab your foot badly not so good on the trails at all unfortunately because i do like these these are the most flexible shoes that i have unfortunately the traction isn't great they had made this without with somewhat more of a, a knobby sole and without the gaps in the shoe especially this gap this is where i seem to be getting the most sticks i love walking around in these though so comfortable except the color the color really kind of is awful very light very very light awesome kind of fun shoe a little too firm for me to run on the roads wide toe box everything about the shoe is pretty cool okay the next shoe up is the sketchers go trail i was really hoping this would be a little better than the go by honor trail but it's i don't like it as well and it has a beefier sole i think beefier tread but it does look at that it's all caked up with mud which isn't really the problem with these they're just Harder. This is a much, much firmer material than the Go Run Ride. It's very, very firm. It's not as squishy at all. And that was quite disappointing. Also, this is kind of a, I don't know if it's a waterproof thing or whatever, but it's kind of a stretchy material. And they just seem narrower in the forefoot, or there's something restrictive about this material that I just don't like. These were a disappointment to me. Not what I was hoping for. Decent traction, lightweight, too firm, not as wide a toe box as I think the other shoes have. Okay, the next shoe up is the Ultra Instinct. I really like these shoes and I ran in them for over a year. Not this particular pair, another pair. I was pretty happy with them. The cushioning is firmer than I would like. Wicked wide toe box, which is fantastic. Zero heel lift at all, which is nice. Although, I gotta tell you, the Skechers Go Run Ride Mid Strike thing really seems to be almost bouncy. It's like quick. These aren't, these have no feel to them like that. They just kind of are basic, bare bones, flat platform. And I like them, but the real problem with these is this bottom, it has no traction. No traction at all in the mud. It's decent. Uh, it's a, a fairly soft rubber, so it actually grips on wet rocks and roots pretty well. And the shoe isn't as flexible as the, the Go Skechers, but it's a decent shoe. I was really hoping when they came out with the Superior, they would have taken this shoe and put lugs on it. And that would have been great. I probably would have never gone to Skechers if Ultra had done that, but they didn't. Firm midsole, but acceptable. No heel lift, wide toe box. Not, you know, kind of medium weight shoe. Decent, but not great. And I'll show you one thing I did. I took a router and I tried to improve the traction of this shoe. And I started off, I routered down here and I routered down here and I did some routering here. And then I took a knife and I tried to shape it. It was very, very difficult to cut through this stuff. I don't know if that would have helped because this is as far as I got. I didn't do my second shoe. This is an older pair of shoes that I was starting to poke through the top here. So I can't say that that would have worked, but who knows? It 
might have. And the, the shoe that I got this idea from was the La Sportiva Vertical K. This shoe has the whole midsole exposed and I it has decent traction in mud but uh, I only ran once I think in the winter with these on some snowy trails and I didn't seem to have good traction at all which was kind of surprising to me. I, the reason I bought these was somebody described them as being marshmallow soft and I was like oh yeah that sounds great you know so I ordered these online and I got them and this is about as firm as a very 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 stale 10 year old marshmallow or something it is not soft at all i am very disappointed in these these have a four millimeter heel lift i guess but it seems like more and they're very flexible in the forefoot but they're not as flexible in the back like they don't flex very well at all so when you step on rocks and roots and things it tends to have more influence on your foot and tends to roll you so a combination of not being flexible and being very firm is not good for me in the woods i just don't like these and they have a narrow toe box the la sportiva vertical k vertical k was a very big disappointment i thought they looked cool and from the description i read online i thought they were going to be awesome but they're not i don't like them don't like them at all so my next shoe up is the nike free and this is the Nike Free 7 -O. I got these at a mall over in Albany, New York, and this is the only free I've ever found with a huge, wide toe box. And I ran in these for a whole winter, and then some, and loved them until I started running in the Ultra with no heel lift. And then I, when I would go back to these, this massive amount of heel lift would irritate the hell out of me. I couldn't stand it. It felt like I was just pounding on my heel, pounding on my heel. I would flex these around, but I have all kinds of dirt in them. They are extremely flexible in every direction, as you can imagine, because they're all siped with cuts every direction. And they don't have good traction in the woods. They have okay traction, but not good. I like these a lot. As you can tell, I ran in the mud in them and didn't have anywhere near the trouble I had running in the mud. With the Instinct. The Instinct has the, the worst traction of any shoe I've ever owned in the mud. These are okay. These are great. These were fair. Yeah, these are soft. This is a soft material. But the problem is too much heel lift. Just way too much heel lift. I've thought about whether I could shave that down somehow, and I have no idea how to do it evenly and not ruin the shoe. So nice shoe too much heel lift nike just doesn't get it every shoe they have has heel lift they came out with a wild horse which has less heel lift but it's hard and not flexible and i don't like running in the woods in it okay this is a more traditional shoe this is the nike zoom vomero it was their probably their most cushioned shoe and i would say it still ranks right up there it, probably is not as cushioned as the Skechers Go Run Ride, but it's really very good. It had decent traction in the woods. It's not, it's kind of a medium weight shoe. It doesn't have good flexibility at all. So in no direction does it flex well. Very stiff, very restrictive, way too much heel lift, pretty good cushion, reasonably wide forefoot, but just too high and stiff. Okay, the next shoe here is the New Balance MT-110. It is something I bought for when we have to run on wet, snowy trails that are covered in water and or mud. And the shoe is way, way, way firm. There's almost no cushioning at all. It's narrower than I would like, but I can deal with it. It supposedly has four millimeters of heel lift, although it feels pretty damn flat to me. It's got decent traction in mud, but it's really bad on roots. It's surprisingly bad on roots. This is kind of a plasticky feeling material and it has a heel uh, rock plate in the forefoot. It, when you step on a root on the forefoot, it just slides right out. There's no give to this shoe. It's very, very, very stiff all around. If they made this with a really soft material, a really rubbery instead of a plasticky bottom. Oh, and they also got to change the inside. This, this stuff inside here, is like plastic and it was bending and creating a problem with a black toenail so don't really like these either okay the next shoe up is the brooks pure flow 2. it also like the sketchers has some kind of a rocker kind of midfoot striking deal going on where you know 
I think they've got it down pretty solid. It's not too much of a rocker like the Skechers had. It's just about perfect and these feel pretty good on the roads. They're terrible in the woods. This sole has crap for traction. Lousy in the woods, but it's not, it's a very firm midsole too, which I don't like. And the shoe is not very flexible. It doesn't flex well at all. So I, this one fails in a lot of categories. The toe box is narrower than I would like. It has four millimeters of heel lift, but it doesn't really feel like it. This is okay on the roads, but definitely not for the woods. Now, this was my biggest disappointment of the whole year. When I heard Ultra was gonna come out with the Superior, I was totally expecting it to be the Instinct with a lug sole, but it's not. It is rock hard. There is zero cushioning here at all. The bottom is some wacky kind of forward facing, backward slicing, slanted, zigzag kind of a thing. It's way too little. These are slippery in mud. They're really slippery in snow. I especially noticed myself sliding sideways, the heel sliding out in corners on our high school cross country course. And they, they're just hard as a rock. So the shoe has decent flexibility, has the wide toe box that I like, is perfectly flat, no heel lift, which I like. Also this little thing, I thought this might be a problem with sticks, but I spent a whole day scouting out a new trail and we were on a side hill for quite a bit of the time walking along and these things really started to dig in and irritate the side of my foot. Most shoe companies don't use string for support. They use some kind of a, I don't know what this is, some kind of a pattern that's glued onto the shoe, I guess. This string is lousy. I don't like it at all. So, and there's way, way, way too much shoelace. I, I, I don't know, I tie these up and I got like to triple knot them and quadruple knot them and I still have too much shoelace. Stupid. And they're heavy, forgot to mention. These are just, I can't believe how badly I do not like these. Okay, this next shoe is the Merrill Mixmaster. It's kind of the epitome of everything I hate. Very firm midsole, narrow toe box. It says four millimeters of heel if it feels like more. It might be just because they're so stiff and so hard. I feel like I'm gonna roll my ankle every time I step on something. The traction, due to the stiffness of the shoe, there's definitely a rock plate here. What happens is when you step on things with, that, are, that don't give and bend around rocks and things, your amount of traction decreases tremendously. If your shoe is bending around a root, so that the f other parts of the shoe are touching the ground. You're not gonna slide out on that root, but if your shoe is so stiff, when you step on a root that you lose all other traction, all other contact with the ground, you're gonna slip out. So I didn't use these hardly at all, and I didn't like them. So Merrill Mixmaster equals an epic fail. And you know, the strange thing is, back when I was trying to run in minimalist shoes, I had some Merrill I don't know, these, these are the trail gloves, but they have a good shape to them. I really like the shape of these. Nice wide forefoot, no heel lift, no cushioning obviously, and I was kept getting bone bruises on the roots, but I like these shoes a lot. I like the feel of them, but unfortunately, my, my minimalist trail days were really rather short. I couldn't, just couldn't hack it. I actually found a pair of shoes that I did like, which were the Vivo Barefoot. And these had enough protection, it must be this thing underneath here, is it gives you enough protection from roots and things that I could run in the woods in these. But I was running along one day and you have to run much more on your forefoot. You can't be heel striking because it's just too much impact. So you run on your forefoot and you land and you, you have your calf absorbing the landing and I was running along and all of a sudden something, it was like somebody pounded me in the calf. Something let loose in my calf and that was it. I couldn't run for a month or more. So that was the end of my, my barefoot kind of attempt. The lugs break off. This lug's totally gone and this lug's totally gone and that lug's going and I barely ran in these at all. Nice to walk around in though. Very comfortable, wide to forefoot, but that's about it. I just can't do the barefoot thing. Another Merrill I tried was the Bear Access. 
And the reason I tried it was because it seemed to have a more cushioned midsole and thicker than the Merrill Trout glove, if that's what this is. But the problem was there's obviously no traction at all with these in the woods. And I just seem to be unstable in these. I don't know why, but I seem to be very much on the edge of spraining my ankle all the time. So while these I liked a lot, these I didn't like at all. I don't know why. I think that's about it for my shoe review. The clear winner. So that's about it. Very, I'm very happy with the Skechers. Go Run Ride 2. Love it now that I made a modification to it. And the Go Run Ride 3. Love it too. Way to go Skechers. You're doing a great job. Thank you very, very, very much.